So really, what all the showrunners and the labels and some artists want is an FSO, which is a fender-shaped object. We're currently headed south of Nashville to Spring Hill because um, we're going to go to a guitar shop called Bluesman Vintage. Okay. That's never a good sign. Bluesman Vintage. Um, at this shop, the guys make custom guitars, basses, and they sell new and used musical gear. This guitar shop will build exactly what you want. You literally choose the two chunks of wood you want to be the neck and the body of your instrument, which can determine the overall weight, finish, color, dimensions, electronics, everything. Say you want a guitar that matches your eye color but isn't heavy enough to also use as an anchor and you want the neck to be an inch shorter and skinnier because you have small hands. When you come back, they've turned those choices into your musical instrument. So the Nashville music scene is world class, but there are definitely a few things that could be a surprise to musicians who haven't worked with specifically country artists. Most country music labels and some artists tend to follow certain traditions. You have to play a P bass or you're fired. If you slap, you're fired. You have to play within the first five frets or you're fired. He doesn't like what you're playing within the first five frets, you're fired. You have to play a single 15 cabinet. Awful lot of ways to get fired as a bass player. Oh yeah, yeah. He, uh, him, Leroy Parnell actually created this thing called the, uh, the Leroy Parnell bass leash. And it was about a six inch um, lanyard that, that attached at the fret board and then around your wrist. Oh, so, you so you couldn't go past. <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. Yeah, he made those as a joke. I think they actually somebody told me they actually sold a few of them as a bass player. The bass leash. One huge tradition among country bass players is to play a Fender bass. Now, this is interesting because you can make a lot of basses sound like a Fender with strings and pickups, uh, different pedals and stuff. So really, what all the showrunners and the labels and some artists want is an FSO, which is a Fender-shaped object because apparently people like to listen with their eyes. You have to have um, an FSO, which is a Fender-shaped object. That means you have, you have to have a P bass or a jazz bass. Doesn't have to be from Fender, it has to be a decent one. So Fender makes a great bass, but they also make heavy basses. And if you're looking for an old vintage country flare bass, you're now looking for an old heavy instrument that may or may not still have good electronics. Uh, the neck might be messed up, the intonation might be kind of whack. So that's where Bluesman Vintage comes in. Yeah, in Nashville, there's, there's also the running joke of, you know, how many bass players does it take to change a light bulb? One, four, one, five, one, four. <laughs> Play rock for the thrills and country for the bills. Um, and there's a lot of artists, there's a lot of artists in town that do that. Uh, in fact, a couple of days ago, Florida Georgia Lines drummer plays metal music for yep. free. <laughs> Jason, Jason, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, what is your your genre of metal that you like? So metal is not the my top choice. Yeah. I like punk rock a lot. Yeah. Um, like pop punk or all punk? Yeah, all of it. Yeah, okay. I mean, in the majority of the stuff that I write is more just all rock. I so if you're into it. punk, you know, you're into surf music too. I, I've written surf music. Okay. <laughs> I'm after the perfect looking country bass that has uh, the setup and precision of some of the really well made and expensive basses that you can get today. He bought one of Waylon's original amps from us here in the shop a few months ago, and then he went and had a, a, a Waylon replica telly built to go along with it with the amp to have a matching set. That's so cool. This is my fender shaped object. There are many like it, but this one is mine. So I've been able to practice, uh, play this bass a bunch, 
and I've played it out live and even used it on a couple studio recordings. And I've got to say, it feels great. Um, I wouldn't change a thing about the intonation, action, or tone. And I suppose it's a bonus that the look of this bass won't confuse or offend any of the Nashville elders. Because I've always got this bass for that.